<laughs> Something about warm weather just brings out the relaxation, the enjoyment, the time to maybe slow down and consider your ways, to think about what you're doing, to think about how you're doing it, to think about what you're doing. For me, a lot of what God does is He takes care of everything for me. So because He does, I operate in a way that sometimes frustrates people, but gives me great comfort knowing that God is in control and I'm not. Because if I had to treat myself as being the responsible party in charge of the universe, circumstances, even decision-making process, for instance, like me making a decision between what I should or shouldn't do, I hate to say it, but I'm not the best one to be able to do that because, you see, I'm subject to passion. I'm subject to lusts. I'm subject to things of the flesh and sometimes not doing the things of the Spirit. So, I'm not the best one to be looking at making decisions or understanding what's the best way to go. But God is. And so I like that because living my life according to grace, I am always constantly reminded because of grace to seek His favor as opposed to thinking that I have something that I don't. How can anybody be that righteous? I know I can't. I failed miserably. Does that mean then I must be forever alienated from God because I'm not that righteous? Do I have to go on in this emptiness or frustration, seeking after and reaching out for something I can never obtain, never get close to God, never be in communication because I'm not, after all, that righteous. Is there any hope for us to be forgiven by God? There must be another basis for it other than our works. As Paul declares, by deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Romans 3.20 By deeds of the law or by the law itself no one is justified. No one in his sight. If we are ever to enjoy fellowship with God, it will have to be on some other basis than our own righteousness. The rules that God has established for righteousness are far too stringent for us to abide by. We can't do it. Our only hope is that another form of righteousness has been provided for us. A righteousness based on a totally different principle than our own works or ability to do. Thank God there is such a principle. It's called grace. You know, I like that because when I think that I have to do something, maybe you don't do this, but I get nervous. Oh, I gotta do something. I better write it down. Maybe I'll forget. How should I do it? What way should I do it? Should I do it this way or should I do it that way? You know, all of a sudden there's pressure. There's stress. There's this inducement to do or to act or to behave in a certain way. But when I know that I'm not the responsible party to make that choice or determination, then suddenly the pressure's off. I don't feel so needful to find out how to do something as much as I am reminded to accept that something's been done for me. I like that about grace. I like that about my life. I like the fact that I don't have to keep working at it any more than these plants have to work at growing. They don't sit down and read a book on how to grow. You see, these plants just automatically, when they get water and sun and are put in soil, grow. They grow leaves, they grow stems, they grow blossoms. Some of them even grow fruit. Some of them vegetables. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to teach themselves how to do it. They don't have to raise themselves up in a certain way. So for me, learning about grace 
has caused me to understand that as a part of creation, the fact that I'm created by a creator, that means that I have a different kind of relationship. It's not one where I have to do good, be good, think good, and act good. Because in me, there's no good thing, according to the scriptures. And according to God, I can't do it anyways and measure up. So there must be something else that maybe is as easy and as simple as these plants that are growing. Maybe it's just a part of life, something that God gives. Kind of like when we read that scripture that says, God causes the sun to shine and the rain to fall on the wicked and the good. You know, maybe he has a purpose and a design for everyone and that some things are beyond our control. And that part of something that's beyond my control is my salvation. I know that I can do my part, which was to choose to accept his way of providing for my salvation. But other than that, I don't think there's really anything I could do to make myself more righteous than I'm already unrighteous. Because, after all, I can't measure up to his standard. He wants perfection, and I can't get to it. I can't attain to it. I can't argue my way into it. I can't even think my way into it. About the best I can do is fall upon his mercy and grace and discover maybe like these plants. If I just live it, grace that is, I'll probably bear fruit like flowers or fruits or vegetables. And somehow I think that's the way God intended us to live. Not so stressed, but de-stressed from the fact that all we need to do is rest in His love to find mercy and grace in time of need and to realize that he really has done everything we need to do when it comes to salvation. Maybe that's what he meant when he said, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved.